Come on. NFC East. We'll start with the Dallas Cowboys, America's team. 10 and 6 last year. To win the division championship, they are plus 175 this year. Strength of schedule is 21st. Their turnover margin last year was 12th in the league at plus 3. Um, offense, total yards per play, number 22 in the league at 5.4 yards per play last year. Total yards per play on defense, they were number 13. They only gave up 5.4, so not bad. Uh, offense coordinator is Kellen Moore, head coach Jason Garrett, uh, defense coordinator Rod Marinelli. They're projected favorites in nine games this year. Uh, of course, we got to figure out what goes on with Zeke Elliott. Um, let me tell you an interesting story. Only 10 teams in NFL history have won nine one-score games, and the 2018 Cowboys were one of those. Out of their 10 wins, nine of them were by one score. Now, they, they only lost one one-score game. Now, is that good coaching, or is that lucky, or what it... So, here's what part of it is. In 2018, their first half offense was number 12 in efficiency in the NFL. They, they had a 48% success rate. They were pretty good. In the third quarter, that dropped to number 25 efficiency. They were way too conservative. Wait, they just, just started say, running the ball. You mean Jason Garrett? Exactly. Not, not right? being aggressive? They, uh, they were number nine that shocked me. in defensive efficiency last year. They improved from number 25 to that. So their, their defense, uh, it was number 25 three seasons ago. Number 11, two seasons ago. Number nine last year. They just keep getting better. Rod Marinelli has done a really good job. Correct. They traded for Robert Quinn. Um, you know, I, I think that they signed Randall Cobb. They drafted Tony Pollard from Memphis uh, at running back to take over for Zeke if he's not there or whatever. Or to split time with him because you can't just have one um, because you don't know what's going to happen. But, yeah, what, what happens with, with Zeke Elliott? I mean, is that the, the key to this? I mean, yeah. we know what Dak Prescott is. We think. We know what Amari Cooper is. I don't, I don't know that we know what Dak is. That's the problem. Jason Whitlock came out this week and made one of the best comparisons I've ever seen to Dak. I think Dak is a really good quarterback. I don't. I kind of tend to crap on Dak a lot, and I don't mean to. It's just I, I crap on the, the Cowboys <laughs> a lot, and that just he just he just kind of gets it on him. But but I like Dak. But. The comparison Whitlock is, is Dak is that great, unbelievable toy you get for Christmas that requires batteries. And Amari Cooper and Zeke Elliott are his batteries. Yeah. And if you don't have both those batteries, your toy kind of sucks. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this. A, good thing this problem, if you're a Cowboys fan, is with your team and not somebody else's, and you're not a fan of someone else. Jerry is your owner. If they play two to three games without Zeke and they don't win all three of them, Jerry going to pay Zeke. Oh, yeah. Zeke will be back by week five, no questions asked, unless they are 4-0. and oh. And, and okay. he'll be on a he'll be, crazy because, contract. Because you've got the owner that cares more about winning than anything else. I don't know that there's another owner in the league that is as competitive as Jerry Jones is. And he's not going to let money he don't care about future contracts. He don't yep. care about next year's team. He cares about right now what's right in front of him. So if I'm a fan, I know this. If you're drafting in fantasy leagues, know this. Just just pretend he's on a four-game suspension because he's going to be back. Yeah. The only way he's not is if the Cowboys go 4-0 and in those first four games and they look really good. Then somebody might tell Jerry, look, man, maybe we don't need him. That's the, that's the only way that happens. Yeah. If if and when he comes back, I think this team's going to be good, but I think they're going to lose some games early, and I think that's going to affect the schedule. I kind of assumed them being a 7-9 and nine team this year. That's what I saw them as. I think I do think Zeke's going to sit out. I do think Zeke's going to miss some games. It's going to take the knees out from under him. I got them 7-9. and Because I thought they were – did I say 7-9 and nine early? I thought they were 9-17. and 17. That's exactly and, what I've got them at. I've got them nine and seven. I got them seven and nine because I think they're going to lose some games early without Zeke, and I don't think you can just make those up. I don't think you're going to win two extra games that you would have normally not won. Do you and think I think Zeke that's hard. Means that much? Yes, I really do. In a okay. in a league in which running backs don't mean a lot, 
Not every team is built the same. Not every team has the same identity. Now, and I right. truly believe he's the best player on that team. He's the most important player on that team. Okay. okay. I will tell you one thing, and we said this last year. Oh, they're over under, by the way. The oh, yeah. Over under is uh, is nine. nine. I was about to say. And yeah. over is plus 100, under is minus 120. That's right. So. so, my initial response when they hired Kellen Moore as an offensive coordinator was, man, this ain't going to work out. And I kind of I kind of didn't like that hire, and I thought it wasn't going to be good. I'm not a Jason Garrett fan to begin with, and yeah. so I think he needs a strong coordinator. I might be wrong on that. Um, Kevin Clark from The Ringer brought this brought this uh, topic up last year when they made the hire, or not the, in the offseason when the, when the promotion happened and the hire happened. I think the guys going to a more college football-style offense is a good thing, not a bad thing. I think it helps that. Kellen, yes, they're going to spread things out. I'm trying to find the best way to say this. Kellen Moore is a college guy. He played all those years at Boise State. He understands Chris Peterson's offense. Man, if you could get Chris Peterson's offense. And then, <laughs> his brother works for Fresno State, right? Yeah. And 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 he's in the college world working with creative uh, uh, play calling. I actually think he's going to be a boost if Jason Garrett takes the handcuffs off of him and lets him call plays. But when you're right, when they get leads – Man, Jason Garrett might be the – he coaches afraid more than any coach I've ever seen in my life. A hundred percent. And that hurts his team. Yeah, yeah. I got, him seven, I got him seven and nine. I think I think Zeke's going to sit out a couple of games. I think there's winnable games on that schedule that they're going to lose. It's, I've, like I said, I've got him nine and seven. I like that defense a lot. Uh, schedule, I think, sets up well, et cetera. So, uh, moving on, the New York Giants. The New York football Giants. Five and 11 in 2018. To win the division championship, they are plus 1,000. Their strength of schedule, number 27. Way on down there. Pretty soft schedule. Uh, turnover margin, they were number 14 in the league last year, plus two. Head coach is Pat Shermer, uh, GM Dave Gettleman. The options that he could have had between the last two drafts, where he could have drafted Sam Darnold and Josh Allen this year at number six, rather than... That would have been good rather than what they have now, is what it is. Uh, their over-under is six this year. To go over is plus 115. To go under is minus 135. Total yards per play, number 10 in the league last year. 5.8 yards per play uh, for offense coordinator Mike Shula. Total yards per play on defense was number 22. They gave up 5.7. So not great, but not awful. Um, they signed defensive end Marcus Golden. They drafted defensive tackle Dexter Lawrence and linebacker, or sorry, cornerback uh, DeAndre Baker. They drafted Daniel Jones on offense. They signed wide receiver Golden Tate to replace OBJ. Spent um, for the first four games. Yep, they are uh, they are a projected favorite in only four games this year. Tell me, tell me why I should like this team and maybe why I shouldn't. I don't. I can't. I've got them at seven and nine. Whoa! And and I, I know that that's insane. Yeah, maybe but not. It it might not be. Once again, all these teams could finish around seven and nine. They they've got talent. Like they they lost um, Landon Collins, and I, looking through the schedule, looking at the team last year, I thought that they were better than their record last year, right? So. I feel like something has to give here. I like Pat Shermer. I do like Pat Shermer. I think he finds a way to get this done. I think Daniel Jones might be better than people give him credit for. Yeah, but people are giving him no credit at all. And that's, so you're that's, right. Yeah. He could be better than that and still be the worst quarterback in the NFL if he's starting. So, I mean, he could easily be 32 out of all 32 starting quarterbacks if he's starting. Here's the problem. If Eli's starting, I think Eli's days are done. Well, here's here's the other side of this. I I think that Odell Beckham Jr. is nuts, right? So I think for that locker room, I think like while he will he could help Cleveland because I think they could thrive in chaos with the egos and whatnot that they've got in the locker room. I think that the Giants didn't know how to handle that. So I think that getting back to a more normal routine roster could actually help them out. And, I mean, they, they won five games last year. So, I think with the roster turnover and another year under Shermer, I think that they can be even better. I, we just disagree. 
I I I got this team three and thirteen. I don't think Ooh. they're gonna be good. I think Eli is if Eli plays the entire season, I think he's he's steady going backwards and he's aging. At some point in time it's gonna be Daniel Jones. And while Daniel Jones might be better than we all thought he was gonna be, he looked really good in that one drive in the preseason. <laughs> five for five. New With York a touchdown. Crazy. Yeah, put him get, get him a gold jacket. But the problem is is at some point in time he's gonna play a defense that's gonna come at him. Yeah. And and I just think that that's going to be hard. It's going to be shocking. I don't know that this – like, they spent a lot of money in equity in their offensive line last year. That offensive line wasn't good last year. No. All those guys were supposed to be good. Nate Solder came over from the Patriots, supposed to be the best left tackle in football. Guess what? He left Dante Scarnecchia. He's big. He's strong. He's athletic. Couldn't block anybody. Yeah. Got busted through by everyone. I, I just don't know that Daniel Jones is athletic enough to – to save his skin, and I don't know that he's accurate enough to make passes on the run. And I know that Eli's not anymore. Yeah. And so if you can't sit in a clean pocket, and at some point in time, NFLs are not going to just let a running back with not a lot of other weapons scaring them beat them. Saquon Barkley is a freak. He might be one of the best offensive athletes in the league. The, the problem is, is there is almost no threat – I like Sterling Shepard. I think Sterling Shepard's a good receiver. Sterling Shepard's not a number one receiver. Yeah. He's not Juju Smith Schuster who can just, you can lose an Antonio Brown and say, we're good. Yeah. We got our number one guy. They're not close to the same athlete. No, they're not close. No, you're right. So, in, in Golden Tate, slot guy, he's probably going to help because you're going to have to have a lot of short, quick passes. I just think defensive guys are too fast now. I, I just do. I, I could be dead wrong on this team. I don't like them. It may be because it, I'm, I'm going the complete opposite way. Last year, I liked them a lot. Yeah, no, I remember Last that. year, I liked them a whole lot. It's, and, and I was and the I one was, that was that, that, that thought were, they wouldn't be good. Yeah, and you were like, wouldn't be good. But now There's, I think they, it, because everybody hates Gettleman so much, it, it, I've seen this script before. Yeah, Everybody but, thinks that they are awful, they're trash, they're whatever. That works when it's the coach or it's a player I don't know that anybody's getting behind the general manager. I agree with you. Because all those players are also getting crapped on a little bit by that general manager when it comes to contract negotiations. No, you're right about and, that. And, you know, agents saying all the reasons why they should get raises, and they're all saying, well, yeah, but you struggled here and you struggled there, and you always yeah, push no, them down. You're, you're right. I, I don't know that anybody's fighting hard for a GM. Now, no, I you, do like Pat Shermer. I would love to be wrong on this. All right, so seven and nine, and you've got them three, three and, and 13. thirteen. Let's move on. The Philadelphia Eagles. Oh yeah, nine and seven last year to win the division championship. They are minus one twenty-five at Vegas. Strength of schedule number twenty-nine. Way on down there. Turnover margin last year. They were twenty-fifth in the league at minus six. Uh, they they really should have been better. Um, they dom they've dominated early down success rate on offense and defense the last two years. Uh, last year, like with Carson Wentz, how they lost some of those games early, I have no idea. I don't know how they went nine and seven last year. I got um, <laughs> their uh, over under is nine and a half. To go over is minus one seventy five. Under is plus one fifty five. Uh, total yards per play, they were number sixteen on offense, five point six yards per play. Uh, on defense, number twenty four with five point eight yards per play given up. Offense coordinators might grow. Uh, they traded for wide receiver Deshaun Jackson. They drafted running back Miles Sanders, who was expected to start this year, and wide receiver J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, who we loved at Stanford. I was just about to say, yeah. that kid's going to – their receiving core is substantially better. Their backfield is a lot better. They got to stop leaning so much on Carson Wentz. I think Carson Wentz is good. We saw this MVP season of him before he got hurt. Yep. I, I don't think that that's natural. I don't think that that's real. I think that was a one-time thing which is why they leaned on him last year. He couldn't come close to replicating it. Not close to replicating it. This year, he won't have to. And that's good. Defensive coordinators Jim Schwartz, by the way, signed defensive tackle uh, Malik Jackson and defensive end Vinny Curry. Uh, both of those guys are going to be basically backups. This, um, this team this team is the best team in the league, talent-wise, in the trenches on both sides of the ball. Yes. That's why early downs on offense and early downs on defense – they're the best in the league. And they still play with a chip on their shoulder. Like that, oh, Fletcher yeah. Cox, it, like, 
These guys still pay attention ne to ESPN, and when they don't get the never credit... Never gets that, credit. Yeah, when they don't get the credit that they feel like they deserve. Nobody has loved Fletcher Cox like oh. we have. I think he's in the realm of one of the best defensive players in the league. Yes. And he doesn't get that love. And it, uh, it drives me insane because people don't know how to watch football. Yes. They're projected favorites in 11 games. Like I said, the over-under is 9.5. I've got them at 11 and 5 this year. I got them 12 and 4. Ooh, yeah, we're yes, close. Sir. It, I like this team a lot. Main, so I think they need to do now, heaven forbid me tell a Super Bowl winning coach how to how to run his team, but but I I think they've got to get rid of this he wants a committee in the backfield. He wants three, four guys, not just a one two punch. He wants three, he four, wants maybe lot. five different. He wants to be the Patriots in the backfield. The problem is is He's never had a really good running back back there, and now he's got one, and he's yeah. young. Not a lot of miles on him. Get those miles, run Miles Sanders all the way through the ground, and and build this offense from the inside out. Your offensive line is really good at pushing folks around. That makes Carson Wentz's job so much easier. Alshon Jeffries is on the other side of his career. Yes, but you got a couple of guys coming here. I love the addition of Whiteside. I've I'm 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 a fan of this offense, and then on the other side of the defense, I think they're the most talented front seven, top to bottom. They don't have a lot of stars. Nobody knows all these guys' names. It's just because people don't pay attention to how defenses are really ran. Yes. This is the most talented front seven in the league. I think this is the best offensive line in the league. I think Carson Wentz is good, not great. But I think he's going to have one of his best years ever. He doesn't he's have he's to above do, average. He, oh, he's a, way above average. Yeah. But he doesn't have to be Superman. I think last yeah. year he tried to be that MVP guy. Well, I think there was so much competition between him and Foles. He wanted to prove that, hey, you, you're still good with me. Like, you're I still better. I don't think they had me. the offensive skill players around him for him to be successful at all. No. Deshaun Jackson is going to be what Deshaun Jackson is. Once or twice a game, Wentz is going to throw the ball up for a 30, 40 yard bomb. And Deshaun's just going to take it to the house. He's going to yeah. catch one ball for seventy yards and a touchdown, and it's going to it's going to flip a game. Yeah, I like this team a whole lot. Let's move on. The Washington Redskins, seven and nine last year to win the division championship. They're plus eight hundred. Their strength of schedule, twenty second in the league. Uh, turnover margin was number ten last year. They were plus seven in turnovers. Their over under is six and a half. The juice on the over is plus 110, on the under is minus 130. They are a projected favorite in four games. Head coach Jay Gruden, uh, this may be the last year if he can't find a way to, to figure something out. However, Daniel Snyder likes to keep coaches around and give them a shot, right? So they lost Alex Smith to the injury last year. That hurts the salary cap. Colt McCoy's coming back. They traded for Case Keenum. They drafted Dwayne Haskins. I think Haskins ends up starting sooner than later. Uh, and that might just be by direct order of the owner because I, I he know. loves Dwayne Haskins. Um, offense coordinator is Kevin O'Connell. Um, defense coordinator Greg Minuski. Uh, they were yards per play on offense last year. They were number twenty-eight, five point zero yards per play. On defense, they were number seventeen. They gave up five point seven yards per play. They signed Landon Collins. They drafted defensive end Montez Sweat. Uh, like I said, projected favorites in four games. Uh, I like Washington. They've got the, talent. They've got talent. And if you're an SEC guy, they got a lot of Alabama dudes. They got a lot of LSU dudes. Like they, they yes, they're all over the place. They um, got athletes. I I can't figure out why this team's bad all the time. Well, they're injured all the time. Th and that, that's the thing. That they has to speak to an organization, right? And that's we've talked about this before. If you if you've watched the show throughout the year, yeah. we've discussed like there's a reason that. Uh, Who's the, the offensive tackle? Oh, Trent Williams. Trent Williams, who re, who says he's refusing to play for him again. Not going to play. And if and if he doesn't play for him, like, that hurts things a lot. Well, yeah. Because he is a fantastic offensive lineman. And I, I've i got this team at 5-11 and 11 this year. We're, I, I we're think close. because they're going to start Dwayne Haskins soon. And What do you just, think of Haskins? I think that he can develop into a really good quarterback. He is... Really accurate with his passes. He, his throwing motion, everything about him as far as being a quarterback is good. Uh, I thought he was better than Daniel Jones. Like, I, 
I think he could have been the best quarterback in the draft okay. over, over that's, Kyler Murray, over everybody That's an else. irrelevant statement as to how he's going to be in the NFL. Yeah, no, you're right. Okay. Uh, it, in the NFL, I think it, like it's going to take a year. That's why I've got him 5-11. and 11. You, Again, you can't project for injuries and whatnot, but You almost I have to assume am. two or three guys are going to go down that are important exactly, on this because team. Because they, they have every year for, what, three Their training years staff now? is doing something that they don't need to be doing. So I'm going to give a free plug to somebody. Hope you're okay with this. If you listen to the podcast, you hear you hear the uh, you hear the promo for a podcast called Shane Falco Experience. These guys are pretty funny. <laughs> They're good. They're out in California. They're good dudes. Um, one of those guys on this show says Dwayne Haskins is going to throw for thirty plus touchdowns and forty five hundred yards this year. And what twenty five picks? I I don't think we're close to the first two numbers, and we're really close to that second that that third number. Yeah, I, I think this team's gonna struggle, and I also think if they were smart in the offensive line, to, like who, it, what, who's he got? Josh Dotson? Like, yeah, I don't I mean, know. Who I don't know who we're like, throwing to. I, I mean, sure uh, Jake, they, they drafted uh, they drafted his buddy from uh, from Ohio State. That's right. But like, here's the deal: Jay Gruden's actually a really good coach, and if he gets fired for this, somebody's gonna pick him up, and they're gonna do really well. He what he has done with the injuries and the problems and the chaos that Dan Snyder and 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 the team president Allen, something Allen or Allen something. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. he's. I don't think these guys are good at their jobs. Like I don't. I don't. I think this is a really hard place to succeed, and I think Jay has been above average with the things that he's gotten. I think they got a lot of talent. I can't explain why guys get hurt all the time. Maybe that is Jay's problem. Maybe the way he runs practices and he puts his guys at risk. I, I don't know the answer to any of those things. I got them four and twelve. I think they got the talent to be a lot better than. Them. I mean, this yeah. is one of those teams where, like, you, if you took a really good cut, like if you took Sean McDermott and you gave him this roster over the Bills roster, like I think that's a Super Bowl competing team. I mean, I think it's a playoff team, but yeah, it's I a, mean, like, like they're in the mix. Like, there's a big difference between four and five wins and. I mean, the, the issue is, is, of course, quarterback, right? Like, he, well, they, I mean, he's he. But he made a playoff and was really close to winning a playoff game with Tyrod. That's a, you're so, right. So I don't know that that's the big question. I think all of the – I think Case Keenum, maybe that Colt. But Case and and the potential of Haskins could be the best quarterback he's ever had. Oh, yeah, it's it's entirely possible. But it will take time to develop. Like, it, I don't think he's going to come in immediately. But Gruden's not going to have that time. So no. the problem is, is, do we see Haskins at all? Because Gruden's got to win now. He can't take the chance of – if this rookie's not ready and he cost us a couple of games, do I lose my job? Yeah, but it, Case Keenum, I mean, you, you know what you've got there. Like, I, I feel like Case Keenum was brought in as insurance. You know what Case Keenum's not going to do? He's not going to turn the ball over. Yeah, he did for the Broncos last year. Yeah, the Broncos are garbage. He uh, didn't for the Col- uh, for the Vikings. Yeah, but, it, but, well, okay, you got a point so there. So, just, it's all about the offense that you're running. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I think Haskins ends up starting sooner than later. Um but we'll see. We'll see. So I've got them 5-11. and 11. You've got them, what, 4-12? and 12? Oh, 4 and 12 We're close. All right. That's going to wrap up our AFC and NFC East previews. Of course, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Go to tunicatravel.com. We will see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com. Or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.